taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Jeffrey Dahmer. The Milwaukee Cannibal. At the Evangelical Deaconess Hospital in Milwaukee on the 21st of May, 1960, Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer was born. He was the child of laboratory worker Lionel Herbert Dahmer, and his mother, teletype machine instructor Joyce Annette. In these early years Dahmer's father was at Marquette University working on a chemistry degree. His mother on the other hand, could be a little neurotic, deliberately antagonizing her anxieties so her husband would come to her rescue. It is also said that she demanded a constant and steady supply of attention. These demands would obviously have their price to pay and the couple argued incessantly, leaving young Jeffrey somewhat lacking of attention and isolated. Dahmer would later recall that these were moments of extreme tension. At an early age Jeffrey Dahmer began to focus his attention on animals, collecting large insects and keeping them in jars. This insect collection would later progress to the recovery of animal carcasses from the roadside, which he would dismember. On one occasion he impaled a dog's head on a stake in the woods behind his house. This obsession with animals and their bodies may have found its way into Dahmer's psyche when he was just four years old. Dahmer's father would later go on the record to say that, when he was removing some old animal bones from underneath the house, the young Dahmer became oddly thrilled at the rattle of the bones. The family would move twice over the coming years, first to Doylestown, Ohio, in 1966 when Jeffrey's brother was born, Jeffrey actually chose his brother's name, David. Then on to Bath, Ohio, in 1968. It was in Bath that Jeffrey asked his father what would happen to chicken bones if placed in bleach, whilst they enjoyed dinner. His father, who was worried about his lackadaisical son's attitude to study, saw this as a great chance to get Jeffrey motivated and proceeded to show him the best ways to bleach and preserve bones. Unknowingly, he was helping Dahmer perfect his murder skill set. During his high school years Jeffrey Dahmer was not really of any note. Although a quiet and reserved student, he was also known by his peers for his various pranks. The staff on the other hand considered him a bright student, but apathetic, noting that he would refrain from putting effort into his studies. Around this time Dahmer realized he was a homosexual, and it was now that he started fantasizing about having a completely subservient partner. These fantasies soon intensified and amalgamated with his obsession for disarticulating animals. On one occasion he took a baseball bat and waited in some bushes, ready to pounce on an unsuspecting male jogger who he had become quite fond of. Fortunately for the jogger, he wasn't running that day. Jeffrey Dahmer would later state that this was the first time he ever went out with the intention to harm someone. Dahmer was approximately 16 years old at the time. One of the main issues with Dahmer's early life was his other fixation. Alcohol. Jeffrey would be seen frequently drinking alcohol in and around the school grounds. He would hide it in his jacket and in his locker, and on one occasion he was asked by a classmate why he was drinking a cup of gin in lesson, he casually replied, it's my medicine. In June of 1978, Jeffrey Dahmer graduated from Revere High School. Another thing happened in 1978 that would shape Dahmer's life more than his graduation. He moved out and his parents divorced. Through the divorce Joyce got custody of Dahmer's younger brother David, and thus he went to live with her. Because Jeffrey Dahmer was now 18, he could live on his own so he was not a part of the custody battle. After that his father moved out unofficially, leaving Jeffrey in the house on his own. This left him feeling unwanted and alone, like he had been abandoned by his family. With everyone else out of the house, Dahmer was left by himself and his despicable fantasies. Mere days after his graduation ceremony in June 1978, Dahmer carried out his first murder. Stephen Hicks was on his way to a concert and was hitchhiking through the area, when Jeffrey Dahmer invited him to his place for a drink. 
The house was empty after all, as Dahmer's father was living in a motel with his fiancée. Everything went smoothly as the young man drank, laughed, and listened to music. It wasn't until Kix wanted to leave that a problem arose. Dahmer's sensitivity to loss kicked in at that point and when he got the opportunity, Dahmer attacked Hicks from behind with a dumbbell bar, rendering him unconscious. After this he calmly throttled Hicks with the same bar, before stripping the murdered man nude and masturbating over his body. The next day he dismembered the corpse and buried it in a shallow grave in the back garden. Not satisfied with this though, he dug up the remains a few weeks later, so he could cut away the flesh and dissolve it in acid. Afterwards, he pulverized the bones with a sledgehammer, rendering them into fragments that he scattered in a ravine. He certainly went to great lengths to dispose of the evidence. Later, when he was arrested, Jeffrey would claim that it was the abandonment issues that drove him to murder, and that he would only kill people when they were going to leave. As far as he was concerned, nobody would leave him ever again. After this first killing, Dahmer was shocked at his own behavior and embarked upon creating a normal life for himself. He retried education by attending college, but that was a non-starter due to his increasing alcohol dependency. Next he tried military service, where he managed to last two years, but it was the drink again that eventually got him discharged from here also. After a brief unsuccessful stint in Florida, Dahmer went to live with his grandmother in West Dallas, Wisconsin. His grandmother was the only relative Dahmer felt true affection for and things went well for a while, until he was arrested for indecent exposure and urinating in public. Dahmer would frequent bathhouses in the area during this period and became extremely frustrated with his sexual partners. His problem was, they kept moving. To alleviate this problem he started putting sedatives in their drinks. Once sedated, Dahmer could use their bodies sexually without the risk of them moving and spoiling his fun. Unfortunately for Dahmer, his partners weren't very forgiving about his nefarious practices and so he was banned from the local bathhouses. In 1989, Jeffrey Dahmer was in a local gay bar and found himself getting on well with another man. The pair retired to a hotel room at the Ambassador Hotel, got drunk, had intercourse, and then satisfied, they passed out. Upon waking however, Dahmer was to realize that he had now taken a second victim, the man next to him in bed was dead, with blood still trickling from his mouth. Forced to use his wits, Dahmer visited a local store and bought a suitcase. After this, he simply placed his lover's corpse in the case and took a taxi back to his grandmother's home, where he dismembered and disposed of the body carefully. A year later and Dahmer was on the kill once again, using the same method as before. Dahmer picked up a gay lover called Stephen Womey in the bar, took him home for sex and substances, then murdered him before he had the chance to leave in the morning. The only difference being, that he took this conquest back to his grandmother's house rather than a hotel. With this victim, Dahmer removed all flesh and remains from the skull and kept it as a macabre souvenir. Over the next year or so, Jeffrey Dahmer would go on an explosive killing spree, murdering at least 12 innocent souls. In 1991 he had a run-in with the law. Just after midnight, Dahmer was spotted by two females chasing a naked, bleeding, teenage boy down an alley, Conorak Synth phone. After law enforcement responded to the situation however, they were convinced by Dahmer's calm exterior and story of a lover's feud. Thus, they released the 14-year-old boy back into Dahmer's care, which would be a truly shocking oversight. After months of putting up with Jeffrey's bizarre behavior, his grandmother decided to kick him out. The smells emanating from the basement, his bringing young males into the house at night for sex, and the constant banging at all hours, was the reasoning behind her decisions. This was another blow for Jeffrey, increasing his sense of abandonment yet again. On July the 22nd, in the year of 1991, 
Jeffrey Dahmer's life took a turn for the worse. His night had started as many others did. Dahmer picked up a guy in a local bar by offering $100 and beer, if someone would pose for nude photographs and keep him company for a few hours. Tracy Edwards, 32, took him up on the offer. After they had been at the apartment a while, Dahmer cuffed Edwards and informed him that he was going to take nude photos of him, then he was going to eat his heart. Thinking on his feet Edwards convinced Dahmer that he was his friend and wasn't intending to leave. Building up trust over the next few hours, Tracy Edwards eventually spotted a lapse and made his move. After scrabbling at the door for what seemed like an eternity with Dahmer following close behind, Edwards made it out into the street and was fortunate enough to run straight into police officers. When the officers saw the handcuffs on Tracy Edwards, they asked him to accompany them to Dahmer's house. Dahmer invited them into the residence and eventually told one of the officers where to locate the key. Realizing his mistake, he went to recover the key himself before being told to back down. That's when Officer Rolf Mueller spotted the grisly Polaroids Dahmer kept in the same drawer. The remains of 11 bodies would be found within Dahmer's home. The discoveries inside of Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment were shocking. There were hundreds of Polaroids featuring body parts and corpses, including a particularly grotesque shot of a torso that had been eaten away by acid from the nipples down. Worse to come was in a freezer, where they found, intestines, livers, lungs, kidneys, three human heads, and a human heart that Dahmer said he was going to eat later. Around the rest of the apartment crime scene officers would come across more deranged discoveries. Five complete human skeletons were stashed in various places, another head was found in the refrigerator, seven skulls were also dispersed around the apartment. They even found sexual organs in a lobster pot. Alongside these items of macabre curiosity, the investigators also found the tools he used to carry out his vile actions. Bottles of chloroform, acid, and formaldehyde were found. Also, there were three electric saws. These were the items he used to eradicate his victims, once he had derived whatever pleasure he needed from them. In all, the findings in Dahmer's home would reveal themselves to come from 11 different victims in total. Jeffrey Dahmer himself, would confess to 17. He was charged on August 22, 1991, with 15 counts of murder. During his trial, Jeffrey Lionel Dahmer pled guilty of murder, but insane. On February 15, 1992, the jurors at his trial found him guilty of all 15 counts of murder. They also found him to be sane during these acts. He was sentenced to 15 consecutive life terms that would see him serve a total of 936 years behind bars. Jeffrey Dahmer refused many offers of protective custody during his time in prison, even though he was a high-profile target who was threatened regularly. In 1994, another inmate tried to cut his throat in the prison chapel but was unsuccessful. Five months later and Jeffrey Dahmer was to meet his miserable end. On November 28, 1994, 25-year-old Christopher Scarver was on work detail with Dahmer, when he picked up an iron bar from a nearby exercise machine and pummeled Dahmer's skull with it. Jeffrey Dahmer died instantly.